Have you guys ever had the opportunity to see someone you love have a dream come true? Recently, we took our youngest daughter to New York to see a play she's been obsessed with for the past couple of years. You may have heard of it, a little show called Hamilton. I bought the tickets many months in advance, and every time I thought about what it would feel like when we surprised her, happiness just filled my whole being. On the day of the show, I was seated next to her in the cozy theater seat. We were taking in the stage, and I looked at her face. She exuded pure joy. She was vibrating with anticipation. And in that moment, everything it took to make this dream come true for her was so worth it. I've been both the giver and the receiver of a dream come true. And here's what I find most exciting. It doesn't matter if you're on the giving end or the receiving end. I'll take that a step further and say, there's only the receiving end. Because whether you're the giver or the getter, you're receiving. You're receiving either the dream or the experience of making the dream come true. I used to question why I deserved to live the life of my dreams. I'm no more worthy than anyone else. I had a good life. But I always envisioned myself living a greater life, a life filled with adventure and abundance and freedom I was restless. I felt like I was put here for more. And I also felt guilty for wanting those things, especially when I knew there were so many others who likely wished for what I already had. And then I had a shift in that thinking. I was having a conversation with my brother one day many years ago We were talking about homelessness and poverty and how pervasive it was becoming in our central Florida area. I was bemoaning how badly I felt when I saw them, how I wished there was something more I could do. And in that conversation, my brother said something, he made an offhanded comment, but it drove straight into the soul of me and has forever changed my perspective. He said, the best thing you can do for the poor is not to become one of them. I let that sink in, and I found that over the next several days, I could think about little else. It simmered and it steeped until it had seeped into every pore. And then I got it. Of course I deserved abundance, because then I could share it. I could be of much greater service if I had more to give. This was life-changing for me. And from that moment forward, I gave myself full permission to create the greatest life I could. And I believe that giving has played a pivotal role in creating the life I'm blessed to call mine. In 2006, I started a paper crafting company from my home called My Favorite Things. I started it just from a love of the hobby with no thought that it would produce revenue or be a business opportunity. But almost immediately, it gained fans. 
and started to grow. And then, of course, my husband and oldest daughter became involuntary employees, initially anyway. Each time the company grew, we looked for ways that it could enrich the lives it touched, from producing our products in the US, giving legendary customer service, giving back to our community every opportunity we had, or treating our staff like family. Giving was the avenue through which our success was channeled. What do I mean when I say treating our staff like family? Well, to me, it, it begins with offering a living wage, a beginning from which a life can be supported. We offer full medical vision and dental insurance, company paid for the full family, now from day one. We offer profit sharing. Every Thursday, we close our retail boutique down and take our staff to lunch. From short-term interest-free loans to planning fun events, we look for every way imaginable to make their lives easier so they are free to come to work unburdened. I recently asked our staff what it meant to work for a company like ours, and here are some of the answers I received. My favorite things takes care of me and my family. So the least I can do is return the favor. It means working for a company that encourages and inspires its employees to be better workers and people. I love showing up for work every day. So I ask you, am I the giver? Or am I the getter? I'm getting an incredible quality of work. I'm getting people who are invested and who care about the company and want it to succeed. I'm getting people that are bonded together, who band to do, willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. I did some research and to how much the average company grows each year. The data I found listed average growth at four to 5% annually. Exceptional growth was listed at seven to 8% annually. Since our inception, we've had an average annual growth rate of 58%. And even after a decade in business, the past two years, we've still averaged over 30% growth each year. Now, I've used the principle of giving to grow our company. But what if you don't have a company or a business you're looking to develop? How does this work in everyday life, in the creation of loving relationships, abundant finances, more life in each moment? Years ago, I was listening to speaker Neil Donald Walsh and he said something along the lines of, whatever you'd like to create more of in your life, give that very thing away to someone else. Wow. I was dumbfounded. By becoming the benefactor, you become the beneficiary. I'd like to share with you my motto, my mantra, and what I believe is the magic behind the miraculous manifestations I've had. And I hope if you decide to take one note during this talk, choose to remember one detail, that you'll let it be this. You cannot outgive the universe. I know this seems counterintuitive, overly simplistic, maybe even too easy, but let's take a further look at what happens when we give. The act of giving allows us to real realize we are able to give. We already have more than we need. 
were already abundant in the area from which we are giving. We can't give money we don't possess, time we don't have, or skills not at our immediate disposal. And in those moments, the moments you fully realize how much you have to give, the universe responds by giving you more. I've had so many demonstrations of this. It often seems as if the whole universe is working behind the scenes and conspiring for my benefit to make dreams I didn't even know I had come true. I'll share a, a quick story with you. We purchased the building our company now calls its home in December of 2014. And during the process of buying the building, we had a trio of amazing occurrences. The building wasn't for sale. The seller offered us the building for less than it was worth, and we walked into it with equity. And he loaned us half of the down payment, which has been repaid, just so we could have it. That is an unbelievable story, right? A seeming miracle one I will always be grateful for. I couldn't have imagined how our building would transpire, or even that we'd have a building. My mind could not have expanded enough to wrap itself around that possibility. And thank goodness, I didn't let my mind get in the way. I know things like this don't happen to everyone, but they can. And how breathtaking would this world be if we were all walking around and manifesting miracles? There is a catch, though. It's small and subtle, but it's significant. You can never give because you want to receive. You can't hand out a $5 bill and stand with your wallet open, expecting a 20 to fall in. It doesn't work that way. It can't work that way because then you're not allowing the universe to work its magic. For the principle of giving to manifest our dreams, our giving has got to be offered without strings, without attachment, without expectation. Our giving has got to be offered so joyously that it rises to the top and bubbles over within us, creating a feeling of utter freedom and bliss. And expectation puts the lid right over the cauldron of magic the universe is cooking up to manifest our dreams and our lives. Life can create outcomes we cannot believe imaginable for ourselves. The universe can orchestrate choirs of circumstances to carry out our dreams. What do you want more of? Give that. Give that freely, unabashedly. The whole universe is counting on you. Thank you.